Hey folks, part two, how to vet a scissor salesman and how to vet scissors for purchase. Um, it turns out I had a little extra time, so I'm sitting here in the parking lot uh, just uh, waiting for some my next few appointments. They're right around the corner from me here, so we're just gonna take care of this real quick. So, you're buying scissors, they're expensive. How do you know you're getting a good quality shear? Before I begin, I'm gonna tell you that for the 1,200 plus brands, I'm guessing these num this number. Let's say there's 1,200 brands in the US. For those 1,200 brands, there's very few factories in China, Korea, Taiwan, and Japan manufacturing all of those scissors. And to put it into perspective, in my opinion, and from what I've heard from a lot of other people that have been in the industry a very long time, there's only 10 or 12 factories in China, Korea, Taiwan, and Japan manufacturing everything that's in the US. There are companies in, that are manufacturing in Pakistan. We'll get into that in a minute. Pakistan is the devil. Um, when you're looking at scissors, really expensive shears, $1,000 scissors that come with $10 or $12 or $15 a month insurance plans, or they claim that the scissor is certified Japanese, blah, 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 or it's stamps, whatever. Before you ever buy a scissor, the first thing you need to ask is where are these shears made? And we're not talking, oh, well, the blades are forged in blah, 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 Japan, and then they're blah, blah, blah in China, and the blah, no, where were they made? Our blades are made in Japan, the shears are finished in China, and the they come to the United States, fine. Our, this shear uses Japanese 440C steel, and they give you a specific steel type, or this blade uses Japanese steel. It is made in China, it's made in Korea, it's made in Taiwan, great. You want specific and direct answers. Companies that on the back of their box or packaging say certified Japanese blades, or finished in a particular country, are using fancy language to say that we use Japanese blades and they're made in China. Most of the scissors coming out of China right now are wholesale to a manufacturer if you buy a ton of them. And we're talking volumes, just to throw it out there, Hattori Hanzo. I'm not going to say good or bad about them. I'm not going to say anything. But Hattori Hanzo buys thousands of shears every so often. They're getting incredible prices on those scissors. I would venture to guess most of their scissors cost them below 25 bucks a shear. I can't verify that because I don't know 100% for certain, but I also know the factory that they come out of in China, and I know generally the price points from that particular factory. I'm hypothesizing, I'm making generalizations, so know that from the beginning. That scissor, regardless of where it comes from, if it costs more than $100, should come laser etched on the back of that scissor with a country of origin. What does that mean? Can you see what it says on the back of that scissor? Now, it might be backwards, but it says Made in China, V10 Steel. Right? It says Made in China. Now, the V10 Steel is... V10 is Japanese steel. But this shear was made for us in a Chinese factory. Right? I bought this from China. Let's look at another one. This scissor here retails for around a hundred bucks. Be hard to read. You see right on the back of that scissor there, it says made in China. I don't care if that scissor is a $50 shear or it's a thousand dollar shear. First of all, if it doesn't come with a country of origin laser etched or embossed on the scissor, it doesn't matter what the rep tells you. It doesn't matter what the sharpener tells you. It's all hearsay. For example, you buy a scissor from a company and they guaranteed that it was made in Japan and you find out and get evidence, hard evidence that that scissor was made in China, but the scissor isn't marked. How can you go against the company? How can you sue them for false advertising? When a blade is marked made in China, made in Japan, made in Korea, made in Taiwan, they are putting a legal obligation on their shears to tell you the truth. They are creating a legal contract with you saying that this is where the scissor was made. I got into an argument 
well, not an argument, a discussion with a rep for one of the biggest names in the scissor industry here in the United States saying that, well, they don't put countries of origins on their scissors because then they'd have to tell you that the assemblies were made in Taiwan and the washers in the pivot assembly was made in Pakistan and the swivel was made here and the screw was made there and the box was made over here and it's just too much. I don't care about that. I want to know where the important stuff was done. If it's Japanese 440C steel, it should say Japanese 440C steel, and right below it, it should tell you what country it was made in. I don't care how much it costs. That's why companies can get away with selling a $1,000 scissor when they're really made for $15 in China. That's garbage. Number two, warranties, guarantees, and sharpening. When you're talking to that particular person are they an independent sharpener that's really looking to help feed their family or are they a salaried plus commission salesperson for a major company a salaried plus commission salesperson generally speaking is interested in selling as many scissors as they can to maintain the salary that they get there are companies that are paying their reps upwards of fifteen hundred dollars a month just to show the shears plus commission on that. They're flying them all over the world, all over the US, telling them to go sell their shears. Versus somebody like myself, who imports my own shears, has my own business, and is really only interested in paying my mortgage and making a little extra so I can take my wife to Disney World. You know, there's a huge difference there. Lastly, and most important, do not ever, I don't care, don't tell me about it, buy from Pakistan. There are companies that are even saying, we proudly make in our family factory in Pakistan and we use Hitachi Japanese steels. Let me tell you something. I don't know of any trade relation between any Japanese steel manufacturer and a Pakistani company. In Pakistan, they can tell you whatever they want because there's no trade relation or regulations on steel type and manufacturing. Secondly, the manufacturing sucks. It is garbage. I'm putting it out there right now. Pakistani shears are garbage. I have in the past five years received over 3,000 samples of scissors promising to match the quality from even China, where you can get a really nice well-made shear for under 100 bucks that outperform a thousand percent any of the Pakistani shears I've ever gotten. End of story outperform any of the, the Pakistani shears. They are unsharpenable. The edges will last you maybe a month, maybe two months at best. And when you get them sharpened, they're gonna feel great for a short time and then they're dead. You're spending money on these tools. Don't waste your money on Pakistan. Also, think about this. If the steel is bad and the manufacturing is horrible, we talked about in the previous video sharpening and how bad sharpening can destroy hair. Imagine a scissor that stays sharp two, three months and now you start using it. You apply more side pressure to try to get the scissors to cut better. What are you doing to your client's hair? You're just destroying your client's hair. I feel that if a scissor costs more than $100 and it's coming into the United States, it needs to be laser etched with a country of origin. And last but not least, payment plans. It's a $1,000 scissor, put $25 down, and we'll figure out how much you pay over the next 12 months. 25 bucks down? Well, that sounds great. Have you ever gone to a car dealership, bought $5,000 car, let's say used car, and you want to get on a payment plan, and they say thousand bucks up front and terms, right? Uh, you go to any most scissor distributors, most other places, they want 50% down, right? They want their invoice cost covered because they don't need to be giving out stuff at a loss. If a scissor company is selling you a thousand dollar, five hundred dollar, two hundred and fifty dollar share, and all they're asking for is 25 bucks up front. You can bet your bottom dollar that's about what they're paying for that scissor. You paid that off. Everything you pay from that point forward is all the gravy money. That's it. And lastly, if a scissor company urges you to buy their insurance plan because it's only $15 a month and you get X number of free sharpenings a year and you get um, 
if you lose your shear, let's say it's a thousand dollar scissor, you can replace, lose it, steal it, break it, whatever. You can get it replaced for 150 bucks. Well, I had a stylist who bought into one of these companies. Scissor got stolen. She replaced the scissor for 150 bucks. What she didn't realize is for the past 10 years, she's been paying the insurance. $120 a year. She got sharpened by the company twice and the sharpening was horrible. I'll tell you, most of the people selling you scissors aren't qualified to sharpen their shears, and I can prove that. So she's been paying my $25 rate to get it sharpened. In effect, after 10 years, she bought probably seven or eight of those scissors just on the insurance plan on top of the 150 bucks to replace it or 200 bucks, however much it was. See where I'm going with this, folks? These companies are trying to create a brand identity and a family identity through paid subscription services. That's not loyalty. That's fear of losing a client. You buy a $250 shear from me or a reputable sharpener and it gets lost, stolen, or broken, I can tell you right now I'm going to give you a discount for coming back to me to replace it. I'm not going to charge you extra for that. If the shear breaks and it's a manufacturing defect, I don't care who sharpened it. I can tell the difference between bad sharpening and manufacturing defect. Companies that are interested and loyal to you as a client, somebody who wants to do business with you, is going to treat you fairly and equitably and isn't going to throw a bunch of multi-million dollar marketing in your face with paid educators who get free shears. None of these people are going to say anything bad about the company. Of course not. They're getting fed. They're getting a paycheck. They're getting free shears. They're getting paid to go around the country to do education classes. And they're getting paid for the education classes. They're not biting the hands that feed them. And I don't blame them. But also that makes for a really nice cushy pillow for companies to hide a lot of dead bodies in their closet. Bury a lot of bad and dirty secrets. So folks, if it's not lasered with a country of origin and they require you to pay an insurance plan or they urge you to pay an insurance plan or they require you to use their factory sharpening or else you can lose their warranty, maybe it's time to think about another scissor company. Because remember, that $1,000 shear probably can be bought for under $300. Folks, this is Brad with Cutting Edge Custom Sharpening. Thanks for sticking around for the almost 13 minutes of this video. Keep your money in your pocket, try a lot of stuff, and until next we speak, stay sharp.